Right, so before we get into any of the JavaScript side of stuff, what we want to do is create a file that will serve to us uh, a list of users and any details that you want to include along from your database. And this is basically going to take a query and it's going to match um, whatever that query is. And we'll do this just within uh, a very, very basic query using PDO. So I'm going to create a file inside of my root directory and this is going to be called users.php. There are obviously better ways to structure this. You probably wouldn't have files like this just floating around, uh, but feel free to just change this up as you need. So this is going to be a JSON file. We're going to output a list of records uh, as a JSON string, essentially. So our plugin that we use can read that properly. Now, don't worry if you've not worked with JSON too much. I'll explain what we're doing as we go. But if you have worked with JSON, this should be pretty straightforward. So we're going to use PHP's header function to change the content type of this page. And this is really important because then it tells us what kind of content is being served here. So we're going to change the content type header to application slash JSON. And once that's done, anything that we output will obviously just be interpreted as JSON. We're still outputting a JSON string if we don't include this, but it's best to explicitly define the content type. So what we want to do then is pass in to this users.php file a username equals and then something or query equals something we'll go with. So if I type in ALE, if for example, a user record uh, the start of a username matches ALE, like Alex or Alexander, or if we were to type B, that would be Billy, then we want to return a list of users that start with that string. So what we'll do is we'll leave the query out just for now, and we'll start on connecting to our database and actually querying. But obviously the first thing we want to do is check that a query actually exists or not. So we'll do a little check up here to say, if that query is not set from the get super global array, and that basically means is it just in the query string, then we want to echo out JSON encode, and all we want to encode is an empty array. If you're not sure what JSON encode does, we'll look at it more down here in a moment. We'll use the same function in PHP, um, and I'm sure you'll get to understand why we use this. So if we don't provide a query, we just get JSON output, and it's just basically an empty array. Um, I'm using a JSON plugin in my browser just to, or a JSON extension in my browser, just to render the JSON out nicely. If you don't already have one, go ahead over to your, whatever browser you're using, install an extension for viewing JSON files within your browser. Anyway, back to the important part, we need to create an instance of PDO here, basically to connect to our database. I'm using MySQL, and the host for me is obviously just localhost. And the database name here, oops, uh, the database name is website. And we then just need to provide our username and our password. That's it. So we can now start to query on uh, the records that you have in your database table. In this case, I've got about 10,000 uh, usernames here that I can play around with. So we'll create a variable called users and we're going to prepare a statement. The reason that we're preparing a statement here to execute is because we're taking a query from the URL. And obviously, if you don't protect against this, you're likely to end up uh, with an SQL injection attack. So we want to choose the fields that we want to select. In this case, I want to select ID and username. It really depends on what you want to select from your table. And this is from the users table. Now the where clause is going to be where the username is like something. So we can just pop a placeholder in here to replace when we execute the query. So all we need to do now is execute this. And inside of here, we're going to pass in an array with the placeholders that we've included within the prepared statement. And then we just need to replace that with what we need. So in this case, it's query. Now we need to replace this with something like x being the actual query, so whatever's typed in the query string, and then a percentage sign, which means if I was to type ALE, anything after that would be included with the result set we get back here. So let's go ahead and replace in get query. There we are. So now that should, when we type in something like AL or B or whatever, bring us back a list of records with uh, that start with that uh, string. 
So we're going to use JSON encode again, which is going to take an array returned from this query and output it as JSON. So we can say users and just use fetch all. That will just return uh, an array and then encode it. So we can see what this looks like. Obviously, if we just hit this normally, we're still going to get this empty array. Let's try passing in a query like ALE. And there we go. So we've got all of this uh, being output to us. You can, of course, fiddle around with PDO and only output uh, an associative array. At the moment, it's a mixed, so we've got a key-based and an associative array. But I'll let you decide how you want to output this. So there's all our data that's starting with ALE. If we change this to Alexa, maybe the list gets a little bit shorter, and then maybe Alexander gets even shorter. So we now know that this works. And this is what's going to be hit every time a user starts typing inside of that input field. So the, a request will basically just be sent to this. And then when they type, say, ALE, we'll get this list. When they continue typing, it will just carry on. So we know that that is all working now. We know that we can get a list of users by executing this query, passing this in, and then we're returning it in a JSON format. So now that we've got that file ready to go, we can start to implement the type ahead jQuery plugin and start putting this all together.